How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And to my right is this wonderful gentleman. And who are you, sir? I am Crisis with a K. I uh, run the site crushingcrisis.com, which has guides to many, many Marvel and DC and independent heroes and how to collect them, which is quite the pertinent topic for our conversation today, my friend, the Uncanny Omar. Well, I couldn't have picked a better person to join me for this because, honestly, I, I needed somebody to be my punching bag while I was getting yelled at. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> uh, so I, I, uh, I did ask Curtis. Curtis will probably join us a little bit later, maybe to talk about the the thing that you and I have discussed. And, of course, that is the epics. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get there because we have a lot of things to cover. The very first thing I, um, I do need to mention some things. This episode is not sponsored by Marvel Comics. This episode is not brought to you by Marvel Comics. These are my thoughts uh, and my opinions, and I wanted to talk about that and get that out of the way. Uh, the second thing is that I lost a really close friend of mine last week, and I purposely avoided the comment section for the announcement video um, of, oh, poor Dazzler. I'm so sorry. I got to apologize to Allie because I didn't have a choice. I had to put two together, and the book, I mean, there are, there's another there's a couple more X-Men Omni announcements coming, but I didn't have the assets for one. And the other one is a standalone one that I wanted to do by itself. But I was like, well, sorry, Ali, you got to be looped in on this. So you I couldn't just let me have my dazzler moment. Yeah, I know. Well, I want, I want, I've been I, waiting for so long. I, I wanted uh, it was I wanted, my moment. <laughs> I know I wanted to give you that conflict uh, as, as I was when I got the, you know, the information. So, yeah, I stayed away from the comment section, but I knew I had to, you know, talk to people because there were so many questions, people reaching out to me. Uh, there were some emails that came in. And thank you all, by the way, um, and, and a beautiful thank you to my wife for making sure that, you know, nothing got out of hand in the comment section. I think she just deleted a couple comments. I told her not to ban anybody or anything, uh, but she just said the, uh, it was just a couple comments that were that didn't add anything to the conversation. So. Uh, whether they were ill will towards me or whatever, I don't know, and I'll never know, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, a few things of how the announcements work so everybody's on the same page, and I don't really, uh, you know, so I don't have to keep repeating myself because I know when you read things online, you know, especially when there's a lot of people upset about something, uh, you, you tend to hear things, but I just want to make sure the record is uh, straight with that, that uh, people know how this works. Uh, oh, uh, thank you to my buddy uh, from the Brave and the Boys. Thank you, Jake. Uh, thank you for all you do, Omar. We love and support you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and uh, honestly, uh, the comments were great. I mean, there were people arguing with each other, right? And I get it. I mean, people are upset. It, it's a, you know, it's a, it's an expensive hobby, and this is a book that we we all. I, I don't want to say we all because there are people that didn't want this book, and there are people that wanted it. But again, whenever you have a difference of opinion. And you're heated about something, it's gonna come out. And people I saw in the comments, you know, I, I think for the most part, the name call, calling was kind of left at a minimum, but uh there were some things that people were arguing about. And then there are people that are legit confused why people are upset. So I'm gonna go through the whole thing, and then uh my buddy Peter and I, Crisis, I'm sorry, uh, are gonna talk about what this means for like future omnibus books and because there's one very important book that i announced uh, that i think some of you all caught whenever i announced the ultimate death of oh damn it this is a spoiler i'm sorry this is a spoiler but it's in the freaking title of the book the death of ultimate spider-man reprint um i need to talk about that book and what it could mean for things in the future like a possible mapping for an ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5. So we'll get to that. So the, uh, if you're new to the channel, oh, thank you so much, brother. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, seriously, uh, all of you. Uh, I think the best thing to do is just to blame more for everything. Is this my ex-wife? Is Heather, is that you? <laughs> thank you, brother. Uh, okay, so the way this works, so I can kind of clear some things about this particular book and announcement. Marvel sends me an email. It's usually uh, David. David will send me an email uh, about announcing books, when they're coming out. Uh, I don't know if you how long people have been watching my channel or not, or maybe you didn't hear this, but they had forgotten about the anniversary of Avengers, and I reminded them. So what they did was reprint 
Avengers, right? It was 60 years of Avengers, so they reimprinted Avengers 1 through five, uh, one through 4 and announced Volume 5. And I also reminded me, because, you know, they get caught up in things like, oh, we got to celebrate this. We got this TV show. We got to probably work something in. Oh, that TV show was canceled. Now we got to move this over here. Believe it or not, this isn't like it's a well-oiled machine, but it's still like grabbing from different sources as they hear. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So what happened is I reminded them that there was also an X-Men celebration. So 60 years of X-Men. And I think some of you knew this, but they didn't want to do. And by they, I mean, it's I'm not going to say any names, but it is people in the collective editions department. They weren't ready to do Uncanny X-Men volume five. I think I've shared that before. It was just a. Yeah, that's not on the that's not on the schedule, but because it was 60 years of X-Men, David was like, well, let's put it on the schedule. And. That's where it all began, right? So Uncanny 5 was not going to be released this year. It was probably going to be released next year. And then when I got the mapping of that, because that's how it works, right? I see the schedule. And then a couple of weeks later, they'll send me probably the content, right? Or may and maybe the covers. When I got the content, I'm pretty sure people know how that goes because I'm a fan. I noticed that, oh, this isn't the way that I thought it was going to go. My goodness. Uh it's missing those X Factor issues and it's missing the X Men issues. Um, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, Peter and I have a show called Map My X where we map this freaking book that I'm going to be talking about right now. We mapped, I, I think we even called it the Prelude to the Massacre or something ridiculous like that because it was such a big book. And, you know, we went back and forth. I did a video much like this one where people were upset that, hey, this isn't mapping perfectly with X Men. So I gave them the three options, right? Like do nothing, leave it as is, because they don't have to agree to anything. Um, you know, it is a business. The second option was adding the two annuals, annual 10 and uh, the New Mutants annual. And the third option was adding everything, right? Like X Factor. So at that moment, they said, we don't, you know, this is Uncanny X-Men it's going to be mapped differently because we didn't know this uncanny five answered a lot of questions, not everything, but a lot of questions for us collectors, which we'll discuss a little later that have been collecting these things since day one, that eventually we're going to be double dipping, triple dipping at times because of events, right? It, it wasn't, it wasn't mapped around an event, which was going to be the mutant massacre. So they did tell me they've got plans for uncanny six uncanny seven. Right. I'm sure eight, nine, because these books will sell. But those are strictly sticking to the Marvel Masterworks mapping. So if you look at the Marvel uh, Marvel Masterworks mapping, what they usually do is put two books together. And that's when I, you know, and rightly like you know, everybody wanted it. Right. Like everybody wanted more issues in that omnibus. So at the end of the day, they decided, OK, we'll add Uncanny Annual 10 and we'll add the new mutants i'm sorry it was was it was new mutants special no it was annual two because it's the uh psylocke joining the team sorry spoilers for a book that happened 40 years ago uh psylocke joining the team in that new mutants annual number two so they did add those and then they said you know we've got plans for x factor and when they saw you know some of the suggestions there was a comment that was made that happens all the time though that was like oh and you know we may revisit this one day now i never say like, oh, they looked at the list and they may revisit this because it's not a sure thing. I don't know 100% what's going to be printed. It's not finalized. Then on top of that, it's not approved by Marvel Legal whenever I do those videos, the ones that are, you know, the announcement videos. They have to be approved. Um, So I, I can't say anything, right? Like, I didn't. I, but I think what ended up happening, this book was not in the works back then. It was just going to be Uncanny 5. And if they already had plans to do X-Factor Classic, then Uncanny 5 was not going to contain any of the X-Factor issues that leads into the Mutant Massacre because that's, to them, it's an event book. So fa And I'm so sorry, I cannot remember the timeline. Fast forward a year, maybe, and I, I see the list, and I saw the prelude. This happened about uh, a month and a half ago when I saw the full list of books. And But things are constantly changing. Like, one book got replaced by Dazzler. I can't say what book, but that book got removed to be replaced by Dazzler. And things are changing like that all the time. You all never know because I don't talk about it, right? Like it, it has to be official. Like this is the schedule and it's approved by legal. 
the day that I filmed this, I got I got the contents the day I filmed it, and I got the covers the day that I filmed it. And I looked at the contents, and right before I filmed, I was like, oh my gosh. That was the book that we wanted, right? Like, not all of us. Again, I don't speak for everybody because there are a lot of people that love their Uncanny and don't want any X Factor, don't want anything else. They just want Uncanny by Claremont with the letter pages. And then there's also Riley, who it's really hard to explain what what <laughs> what they're looking for in any. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry, it's a long drawn out story, but I want to explain to people how the process works. Um. I communicated with them that, you know, this is the same book, but it was everything that's missing. And, you know, and to them, they're so far ahead. They're, I mean, this book doesn't come out until, when is it, October of next year, I believe? October. To them, it's like, oh, well, Uncanny, you know, they're thinking Uncanny Five's already out of print, and this is the book that you all wanted. And now we can do it because we have the master files for the X Factor omnibus uh x fact what is it called x factor the original x-men omnibus volume one we have those master files that we can just put over into this omnibus compile it together and that's how this book came to be so whenever i like and i and i want to explain that because i know as a consumer and as a fanboy like this would have been the book for me yeah this would have been the one that I'm like, oh, my God, this is the announcement that I've been waiting for, the big gap filler. And we have a lot of gaps in X-Men, but this to me was the big gap filler. This would have made my day. Yeah, I, dude, I understand you're mad. Like, uh, but we can't, I don't, I'm just telling you, yes, they are a business. Of course, people are going to buy books, right? I mean, but I'm just telling you how it went down for me. I'm explaining how it went down so you understand that both books were not in the works at the same time. We got Uncanny 5 because of the, like I said, it was these, good Lord, 60 years of X-Men. Right? 60? 1960? Right, right now. Let, two, two months ago. Yes. Woo! And then we got this book. For the people that collect the Venom Omnis. And I need to explain that too. But before I do, let me um let me just grab a couple of super chats here. Next year's 58 years anniversary of Wolverine. That's right. That's what we're getting Wolf V5. Right before the no-nos years. Uh, I'm so glad I procrastinated on Uncanny 5, which is a better book on all accounts, and it comes out a uh my birth month. Also, hi Peter. This is from Felix. <laughs> all right. Um, I think. That's it. That, I, I'm just, like I said, I'm just explaining, laying down how it happened. I'm not making up any kind of excuses because, like I said, I don't work for Marvel. These are just, I'm just laying out the facts. Like, I found out about the book a month and a half or two months ago, whenever I said I had the new list. I found out about the mapping the day that I shot the video. And I express, you know, I think people are going to be upset. And then um, looking at the comments, I did share with David and he shared with his team. So that's how it all went down, or that's how this is going down. So now, from a fan's perspective, because, you know, everybody works hard for their money. These things are cheap. I understand why people are upset, right? Honestly, dude, I thought about this. So you're saying this is your fault, Omar, for reminding them that it was a 60th anniversary. Because if I, could ha if I had kept my damn mouth shut, then maybe, maybe both books would have been released at the same time when they were supposed to in 2024. Or maybe we would never get the one or the other. It's the causality is impossible to untangle. Well, I know. Right? And, and I'll be honest. I know Bernie's joking, but I really thought I even texted uh, Peter. I was like, shit, <laughs> I think I may have started this when I just should have kept my mouth shut. Because remember, they were like, we're not adding annual 10 because that's not the way the masterworks are mapped. We're not adding new mutants annual to. Um, so Peter, you're you're coming at it too from a fan's perspective, right? Like, I'm sorry I had to throw your alley in there, but how did you know when when the announcement came out? What did you think? Well, my first thought is perhaps I will finally be credited in a Marvel omnibus. This can be special thanks for getting the map right with Omar to Crisis. That that was my first thought because 
No, I'm it's only 50% a joke. My first thought was this map is perfect. And this is a book that we've all wanted. And you're talking to somebody who the whole reason my site exists was because in 20. 10, I had room in a house for a bookshelf for the first time. And I said, surely there's somebody that I can give a thousand dollars if I save it up, who can just give me a shelf of X-Men. And I was aghast that there was no answer to that question, especially at the time. I mean, we all remember if you wanted all these issues sequentially, you had to pick up not only Masterworks, not only Essentials, there were maybe, there were two omnibuses that existed. You were tracking down trades like the executions trade that had little single issues of Jim Lee in it. There was no answer. And so to have started my site with that and to have come to the point now where we have not only full omnibus coverage, but in this case, multiple choices for if you want a streamlined line omnibus just for Uncanny or a more broad event omnibus that shows the whole formation of X Factor. It's to me, that's fascinating as a fan, but also, I mean, talking about feeling the crunch and money, I'm paying in New Zealand dollars for these American books. And then I've got to get these big, heavy omnibuses shipped here, which cost almost as much as the omnibus itself. So the budget thing is very, very real for me, way realer than it ever was in the States, because every one of these books, I'm deciding if something's going to cross an ocean to get to me. So um, when you first made the announcement, I, you know, all those thoughts went through my mind. Where's my credit? Uh, and also, yeah, also wow, this book, I, whoever could have imagined that this bookshelf would ever be so perfect when I started my site in 2010. And then also, oh my gosh, I have big choices to make because I already bought much like many of you Uncanny X-Men 5. And much like many of you, I have every intent to pre-order the X-Factor book. So am I going to get the, this book too? Like, uh, okay. we already know I have but, seven copies of the Dark Phoenix Saga in this house. Do I need... Well, um, how much do you like the Mutant Massacre things leading up to the Mutant Massacre? That's, uh, X, that's Uncanny X-Men 201 is one of my favorite issues of all time. So great, that, great that certainly is a discussion. Uh, so to answer this question, Omar, you had informed Marvel about the material we wanted in this much appreciated Omni. They could have easily announced Uncanny 5 and Prelude together or announced the Prelude first. In a perfect world, yes, I would have loved that, but it was something they had to revisit because they weren't ready for it. They weren't even ready for Uncanny 5. I don't know if you've heard what I was saying about the, they didn't want to release Uncanny 5, not until next year, I think is when, just looking at the way they've done things. Um, so it, it, also, it almost was like kind of like what, what Avengers, right? We got Avengers at 5 for the celebration of 60 years, and then we got Uncanny 5 for the celebration of 60 years of X-Men. Go ahead. Peter. Also, a question on that, Omar, is... The X -Men, Uncanny X Men Volume Five is technically part of the Masterworks line, where they get they get all the files that they've already improved for Masterworks for the Omnibus. But at they the time, should, there's no X Factor on uh, Masterworks. Exactly at the time that we were all asking for this, there's certain there's still no X Factor Masterworks, and no. I didn't even think that X Factor Epics? Volume One Epic Collection was even out because they led with X Factor oh, no. Epic Collection. It, it was three. Out. so like. We were asking for like a masterworks quality omnibus to all of a sudden have like 500 pages of stuff that had not been restored to that quality. It had only been restored to basically Marvel Unlimited quality to that point. Yeah. Or am I wrong? It, I'm just trying to like well, piece it together in my mind. I believe we did have X Factor 1. X Factor 1 came out before that announcement. Okay. Uh, the ep I'm sorry, ec the Epic Collection. Uh, there yeah. are no masterworks, so there's no no touch up on them right like they're touched up enough to put into an epic collection which in the 80s they look great it's in the 90s when we get to those weird digital colors that the oof, those need to be touched up those need the masterworks <laughs> treatment but we're a uh, little bits away from that um so i mean they would have had to it would have been some uh you know putting the files together changing the size of course but i, I it was just we're going to have one book. It's going to be Uncanny 5. That was yeah. it. And then they were like, if people want event books, then we'll give them a Mutant Massacre Prelude book. Which is the thing that happened. Um, and if you're not familiar why people are upset, I'm going to present my screen here. Let's see some slides. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's share this. Because um, we're also going to be talking about the future mapping of uh, Omnis. But... This is what's collected in the omnibus that was announced on Sunday, I believe. Um, X-Men and Mutant Massacre Prelude containing all of this. Now, if you're looking at that and you look at Uncanny 5, it is everything in Uncanny 5. Because it even has the Marvel Fanfare 33. So everything Very in important. this book. Yeah, it's good artwork. Uh, everything in this book 
is contained in here. So people, I mean, this book just came out, I, I believe a couple of March, uh, I want to say March, you know, and, and people were like, I just bought this and this is the book that I wanted. So people were upset, right? And rightly so, because this is the book they wanted. This is the book we got. We had no idea this book was coming out. So they feel like I just wasted $125. Now, that's not everybody, right? But then when people are angry, it makes it feel like it's everybody. But there were people that were like, no, I don't care about X Factor. I just want my X-Men. I want my letter pages. I want the stuff that I read when I was a kid. I don't care about the Mutant Massacre because this doesn't even make any sense because nothing happens here. Besides, it's not like Mr. Sinister's in the background of each panel going, wait till I wipe out the Morlocks with my Marauders because that doesn't happen. It's just where the characters are going in this arc, like what happens to Rachel. And that really doesn't get any kind of resolution until after fall of the mutants and things like that. Or, but the big thing is the split of the team, right? It's like, Oh, the X-Men are splitting. We're going to have the original five B X factor. And we're going to have uncanny X-Men stay with storm as the leader who is powerless at the time. So, it, so yes, technically they could call it that. I mean, just like if you think about the, what, what, what was that book? The war of, uh, War of Kings, there really was no prelude to War of Kings. It's just things, mini series that they put together that they're just like, hey, we'll put this stuff here, call it the prelude to War of Kings, and put it together in a reading order that leads into the War of Kings omnibus. So it's very similar to that. There really wasn't an event. As a matter of fact, Mutant Massacre is the event that kicked it off for the X Men. And it was so popular. There was a summer event every year after that fall of the mutants, Inferno, Extinction Agenda, you know, the ex Executioner song. So, it, yes, if you're not familiar with why people, some people, not, not everybody, I'm sorry, uh, were upset, it's because of this. And what does that mean? Like, if you have this, right? Like, what does this have that this doesn't have? Well, this has the um, X Factor books, one through eight, and then the first annual plus the Iron Man annual number eight. So pretty much this has the beginning of this omnibus that also is not out. And that was the other thing I was thinking. I'm like, man, people are mad now. Can you imagine how mad they would have been after X Factor 1 came out if they didn't have any plans to buy it? Because, you know, the stuff, some of the stuff in here is collected. If you get X-Men, right, the event omnis in Fall of the Mutants, in the Prelude to Inferno, uh, or the Prologue, in the X-Men Inferno omnibus. Like, or the stuff that mainly fall the mutants, though, and the prelude. So, you brought up the question. Oh, sorry about this. Omar, will they use the new Marvel Masterwork scans this time? Um, I'll ask about that. I'm not sure, but I, I will definitely ask about that. There's going to be a lot of cheap uncanny x-men fives on ebay and look here's the other thing i'm not i will never tell anybody what to do because it is your money at the end of the day you know you all decide I'm, what we're doing is trying to uh fill people in for some possibilities what uh, this is another good question why didn't you just wait a couple of years for this volume right on the heels of uncanny five it's just weird a few years later nobody would care well, Uncanny 5 released in March. This one comes out in October of 2024. You're right. I don't know if, like, I, I, it would have made a difference, maybe, but then it would have been on the release of, what, X Factor 1, right? Then you would have had another set of people that are upset. They just bought Uncanny 5. They bought X Factor 1. And now you have this book announced? Then you have that, right? So it's like, when do you announce this? If it's already in the works, right? When they decided to put this in there, like, when, when do you release it? So, Peter. Uh, and, you know, what do you, now that I've kind of you know, explained a little bit about this and why people are upset, what are you going to do? Well, actually, do you want to go to the, the very colorful slide and talk about that a little and then. Oh, uh, and we'll come back to these. Yeah. Those are, uh, can I just say how amazing Peter put this together and I'm just going to remove us so we can focus on this. And I'm going to remove our near me condition. Logo. There you go. Okay. So I, I, yeah. I'm a visual person and you all know, many of you know me from my site and mapping things. And sometimes mapping things just in text doesn't get there. And so having this conversation and seeing the list of the issues over and over again, I just wanted to say to myself, like, is it really the same? What's the same? What's different? So on the far left, we have 
Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 5, which many of us purchased. That is mapped directly from Marvel Masterworks with a small tweak to the annuals, thanks to feedback on near mint condition that Omar was able to pass back along to David Gabriel that was well considered, right? And you can see here, if you compare the thing on the far left to the next one, the contents are completely contained with an X-Men Prelude to Ma Newton Massacre, every single page, as Omar said just a couple of minutes ago. This is something that used to be a rule in Marvel that would never happen. No omnibus was could completely contain another omnibus. The first time they ever really broke that rule where an omnibus was recontained in its entirety was when they reissued the Squadron Supreme Omnibus. But a lot of these rules that we've established for ourselves, and I'll talk about this more shortly, were rules that we came up with as a community from 2006 to yeah. 2021, and the world is continuing to change. So let's put a pin on that and I'll come back. So there's the X Factor Omnibus, which Omar recently announced does not come out into deep into 2024, and it comes out before this new Omnibus. And you can see there that the blue boxed stuff at the top of that is what's repeated in the Prelude to Mutant Massacre. But the X-Factor Omnibus has a lot of other chunks of material. It has this next chunk of material in that lighter blue color that is the actual kind of Mutant Massacre era material, which is covered in the Mutant Massacre Omnibus on the right. And then there's even more in the X-Factor Omnibus. There's another section of uh, issues, and then there's a few issues we've never really seen collected alongside X-Factor before. Now, this to me was still a lot of information to take in visually. So Omar, if you could go to the next one, which I think really brought it together, and then we'll jump back to our faces. And be, 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 before you start on this, though, can I just yeah. say how much this, what you did, reminds me of this? <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, the irony is not lost. <laughs> that this, by the way, this was released as like, oh, you don't. Here's the mutant massacre. You don't have to buy X Factor nine and ten to enjoy it. You can just follow the adventures of the X Men. There's and pipes. Like, Travel along the pipes. This is exactly uh, what you're doing. Here. Yeah. So I, I wanted to revisualize that in a way that showed what was common between these books, so I could really understand what was on the bookshelf, and it made me realize something that I didn't fully understand at first, that that X-Factor Omnibus now crosses three different books. It crosses Prelude to Mutant Massacre, then it crosses the X-Men Mutant Massacre Omnibus, and then it also crosses the Fall of the Mutants Omnibus, and then, in addition, they also add Mephi Mephisto Versus 2, Secret Wars 5, which is the first appearance of Boom Boom, and then some material from Marvel Fanfare. So seeing it this way really made me understand that um, there's we're really talking about two different lines of omnibuses. We're talking about the X-Men events line, which used to begin with X-Men Mutant Massacre and now begins with a prelude to Mutant Massacre. And then we're also talking about title lines. And the title lines are going to span so many event books at once because yeah. they are allowed to get further because they don't have as much material from other series in them. So, Omar, maybe we can come back to the slides again, but I think that's, I, I know, maybe give another people another minute to take a look at this, but I know we have some super chats to get to. Um, yeah, let me, let me come back to, to this over here. So, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan, uh, appreciate the transparency. I think people would be happy if we can know Marvel future plans with the uncanny X-Men and other mappings. If, if, I mean, if ever they tell me, of course, I will let you all know, but I only say what I'm told a hundred percent, right? Because when I make announcements, like it has to be approved by the Marvel legal department. Uh, so, but yes, anytime that, uh, that's why I mentioned in my announcement of uncanny five, that there's going to be a six and seven in my announcements or my announcement of death of ultimate Spider-Man, that that's an event book. Ultimate Spider-Man five is going to be mapped different, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Cause we also have that to talk about. And yeah, man, your mapping is in I love you for that. <laughs> but I, this is the thing I really want to get to off the back of that comment about the Spider Ultimate Spider-Man line is we as a community got so used to thinking as omnibuses as all, they're a line. It's the omnibus line. I remember I used to have a page with every single omnibus ever put out on it back when that was something reasonable to do. Uh, and you wouldn't have to keep up with Omar night and day to catch all the new Marvel omnibuses. And we had all these rules. They were the permanent rules of omnibuses. Avengers omnibuses could only come out if there was a movie, right? That used to be one, of, and Iron Man too. Oh, those, those, those were the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, you know, omnibuses would have exactly three Marvel masterworks, except for, you know, the first omnibuses because the masterworks were too short at the beginning. That used to be a rule. There used to be all of these rules that you could extrapolate that honestly probably really were rules. We'll never know unless we interview Corey or, da or David or anybody who was around in the department. But omnibuses were, the, omnibuses were this very regimented thing, and we could extrapolate a lot of things. We could figure out the price per page. We could figure out the release schedule. We could say with total certainty that if a movie was going to come out the MCU, it would get three omnibuses attached to it if it was an Avenger or two if it wasn't an Avenger. Like we knew these things and they were always true. And that really started to change around 2016 and then fully by 2021 had fully changed. And I think the thing is, and the reason I wanted to do it from, from this set of bookcases this time is we have to start thinking about the omnibus line as a line that has many different lines inside of it. If you're just looking for one line that's never going to break any rules and you can just buy every book and not really have to think about how they're going to fit together or puzzle together, you want the masterworks or you want epics. That's what they're for. The masterworks are going to be super, super streamlined and the epics are going to be, you know, as much of everything for that one title as you can get. And it's really starting to become apparent that like we're, there's so many omnibuses that I don't think Marvel's expecting us to buy every single one. Some of us do, and they're very appreciative of that. But it's really, really becoming apparent that these event books that we've all cherished for so long and thought were a permanent part of our bookshelf were just one way to approach the series. And Marvel's going to go over the series another way. And if you think back, the War of Kings and the War of Kings Prelude is a great example of that because it's the first time this really happened. We demanded that DNA Guardians of the Galaxy omnibus for so long. We've now been we through several it. reprints of it. Everybody yeah. takes it for granted. That used to be one of the ones at the top of the poll, but then it also got covered by the War of Kings Prelude stuff. And, mm -hmm. and um, some people were upset because they had been waiting forever for the Guardians omnibus. I'm not saying people shouldn't be upset. Uh, this totally turned my omnibus budget upside down. But I'm trying to think through it from the perspective of um, we're expected to buy the stuff we really want. And us as a collect set of collectors here on this channel that are like, oh my gosh, I want to get everything with the word X-Men on it. We're actually a pretty small subset of that. And I think um, we have to just start changing our thinking a little bit around like there's going to be some event omnibuses and there's going to be some title line omnibuses and they are going to cross over and they are going to double dip and they are going to recollect each other. I'm not saying it's a positive. If you want to think that Marvel is just doing it to milk as much possible money out of us, that is a fine opinion to hold. Old, but I just always try to deal with the reality of what's in the books and what's on the schedule. I'm a, a very, very numbers spreadsheet oriented person. I don't attach a lot of emotion to it. Maybe I should. But um, I, it's just really apparent to me that we're looking at an omnibus as a format that has many, many different lines inside of it. I don't know, Omar, am I, am I talking crazy? Like it, no, it just, no, no. Um, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm apologizing for anything either. It's just yeah, as it, it, all it's in my charts and colors spreading out in front of me. It's just really apparent that we're talking about multiple different lines of books. Well, it's hard not to do that, right? Like uh, when, when people see that, because it comes from my channel and I'm the guy that gets to make the announcements and immediately yeah. some people, not everybody, but a small minority of people believe that, oh, Omar works for Marvel. And I'm like, and again, I just want to remind you, I do not, nor is this video sponsored by Marvel Comics. These are just our thoughts. Yeah, I'm not and... allowed on the Marvel font. There's a restraining order. There's a whole thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not none of that. Um, and of course, my thoughts are like, crap, we've done this before. You mentioned Guardians of the Galaxy. That's that's a prime example of I had that omnibus. Now I need to get rid of it because I want these five omnis. Hopefully they'll do five omnis. And remember, we weren't for sure they were gonna do five omnis. They went back, like they started with. Annihilation. Then we got Conquest. Then they did War of the Kings. And then they did the War of the King, the Realm of the Kings. And we were like, what about that missing era? And that's when we got the road to War of the Kings. It, it, for the same reason I was upset about Nova. Like, Nova got canceled. Nova was not, is, um, you know, it, it was over, it was one oversized hardcover format. And then that's uh, it. That I was still really me. I still have that one was, oversized Nova on I my shelf. It. It hurt too much to look at it. But, I mean, we've rebranded Miles Morales, right? Uh, we've rebranded that to a Miles Morales Volume 1 and 2. We've seen Amazing Fantasy. That omnibus become almost obsolete because they released, what was it, the the Ditko Suspense books. and and But there was time in between, and I think that's the difference, right? Like, this is, to a lot of people, I just got this book in the mail, and now you're yeah, telling mine me... mine is still in shrink wrap, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of people are like that. Now you're telling me that there's going to be a 
better option. Now, somebody was asking how much do I think this book is going to cost? Honestly, looking at the page count of 1,496 pages, that's a $150 book. You know, because um, what it, uh, Uncanny is 125 and X Factor is 125. This is a, yeah, that's a $150 book. There's no way that it's not. Um, so now, now, oh man, I'm sorry. Literally got it Saturday. Then it was like, oh, fantastic. This is such a bad beat. Right. There's a lot of people that feel like that. And that's why I didn't like, I any, any comment as negative as it was, uh, people were angry and it's because of things like this, right? Like that book just came out. Uh, then the problem with having the entire content also happened to the Thanos War Omnibus and Guardians of the Galaxy books as well. Yeah, and like they did, what was that, Infinity book? Remember that, where they put Infinity Gauntlet with the Infinity event instead of just reprinting Infinity Gauntlet? Like, yeah, and I think, I think honestly, it shows there's really four or even more li lines of Omnibus. There's the, we're covering this whole title line, which is what we kind of assumed all Omnibuses were. Turns out there's not. Uh, it then there's the, this is an event we're capturing everything within the event line, right? Which is what this is, which is what War of Kings is. Then there, there's this new idea of character specific lines. We're going to give you every possible significant Loki story, Doom story, Phoenix story. Some people get so bent out of shape that oh, that Phoenix omnibus is a waste. Not if you like Phoenix, not if Phoenix is your favorite character from the cartoon and you just want all the Phoenix. Oh stories. yeah. It's, it's a different line. And then somebody, in, and then Omar, you just brought up that there's this other line too, which is just like a line that's really aimed at more casual fans that just want the big blockbuster stories that don't even connect. Right. Here's infinity gauntlet and Hickman's infinity. How do they yeah. connect? Well, it has Thanos. And people, and sometimes that are big collectors, get so bent out of shape about the the Loki Phoenix Doom kind of books and about those books. But not every omnibus is for every collector anymore. That that was the market in 2013 or 14. Now we're in an omnibus market where they are aimed at wildly different collectors with different tastes because the collectors showed up and bought them, which is the best possible outcome. I wish DC would get that message. Um. Good, good, good on you both <laughs> to doing this show in advance before next Saturday because I will be gone. This that was the other reason I'm doing it today too because I won't be on the Saturday stream because I'm going camping with some friends uh, for our annual camping trip that I've missed for the last three years because I've been here. The poor ladies would have been, <laughs> yes, they would have, been. yes, they would have been. I don't know what all has been said. I'm in and out because I uh, because of work, but I didn't want. Road to uh, Mutant Massacre, but wanted Uncanny 5 because of the letter columns and bonuses. But it sucks they didn't give people a choice. It's okay. It sucks that it, yes, from the beginning, right? It would have been great. It would have been great if we could have had something like this released, <laughs> like an announcement like this. By the way, if you want everything, get this. If you just want X Men, get that. And later on, you'll have X Factor. And here are your three options. You know, it would have been great, but unfortunately, this book wasn't even on their radar. It is now. And yeah. Yeah. Infinity by Starling and Hickman. <laughs> that was it. That it was I it. mean, at the time, even I mocked it. People were like, should I buy it? I'm like, no, you shouldn't buy it. It, does, it has nothing to do with anything. But you know what? It's for people who want two big Thanos stories, period. That's who it's for. It's not for probably most of the people on the stream that have shelves that look like the shelves between Omar and I, or maybe it is because you still want it because sometimes you want to just sit down with your kids at bed and read them infinity gauntlet and infinity, which I have done with my daughter. So it could be for you too. Uh, better option is subjective. This is from my buddy, John, the prelude version isn't the version for me. Volume five has all I want. And the prelude is loaded with stuff. I don't. Yeah. And I think that's, that's also the thing too, right? Like the people that want this book that didn't get uncanny five or didn't understand why people were upset uh the people that did, bought uncanny five didn't understand why people were upset that this book was announced so i was explaining why from both angles and something i haven't said is how would i handle this taking marvel and announcements and you know review books out of the equation oh my gosh this is my this is the book i map this is the one that i would get i would sell my uncanny five or gift it to a friend and sorry john but to me i love that era and it's so cool to read it together and i know and i'm not over i swear i'm not telling people what to do with their money i'm not overselling x factor because i realize it's not that great 
but it holds a special place. How, in my heart. how dare you? Oh, come on, dude. Apocalypse turning his arms into wings and flying away to fight another yes, day. Yes, it's better than whatever crap Claremont was writing that month. Don't whoa, 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 really... whoa, 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 dude, dude. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Claremont <laughs> was at his, he was right before the fall. Anyway, uh, the fall of me. <laughs> I love that story. Shot fired. But, but yeah, which just goes to show you that everybody wants, you know, something a little bit different. So there is also the option uh, that we had here. Let me go back to these wonderful maps right here of, yeah. So we wanted to talk about these um, because these are, there's epics, right? There's an epic that's coming back to print. This is the gift, which collects, and I know people that get Omnis usually don't get epics and i get it i respect that everybody's entitled to collect what they want to but there are people that mix and match and don't care they're like okay just give me the story uh so there is the option of getting the x factor epic volume one genesis and apocalypse which contains every single issue that is in that omnibus yes except for the material classic x-men isn't in that omnibus is it gosh damn it it is it is never mind but yes x factor nine is it <laughs> yeah, but X Factor Nine is in your Mutant Massacre. Yes, I know. It's, okay, oh, they, don't, they don't perfectly line up. Yeah, I was uh, explaining it for the people that uh, didn't know. So, yeah, you can go this route. I uh, X Factor. There's a Volume One, which goes into something else that you and I haven't even covered yet. Does the Prelude to the Massacre also mean that we're going to get an Inferno Aftermath with? Judgment War collected in it. <laughs> well, Have I mean, you thought about that? Because I mean, that's something I think asking about. themselves, right? Some people want that. Some people are like, that book should connect to my other event books on the other side. It's been on the poll. People are looking for it. I know James Burden has looked for it. Shout out to James at least once because we've talked about it. Um, but you have to ask yourselves, well, if I'm going to buy this X Factor line and if Marvel eventually does, uh, you know, a uh, Inferno Aftermath, which this suggests could happen. Omar's not announcing anything. I'm the one with the suit, not Omar. But are you going to commit to the X Factor line knowing that it could be totally covered in event books? Because I'll I'll lay solid odds. I would lay over $100 that we will eventually get Inferno Aftermath. Could be years from now, but I think this just shows that it's probably going to happen at some point. Um, you got to start asking yourself these questions. You don't need every book. You have to decide if you're going to commit to title lines or event lines. I personally committed that I do not care about the Uncanny X-Men title line anymore. I have all of them in a format that I like, starting with Mutant Massacre in the event books. I don't need any other format. I like the mapping I already have. I'm not buying them anymore. Uh, and that's a decision that I made for myself and you may make a different decision. Okay. Yeah, and I, Brent, I really, to, I don't want to make this morbid, but as somebody who brought 25,000 books across the Pacific Ocean and probably now has more, something over 30,000, um, these oh, these oh. books all do have to go somewhere, you know, put put them in your will and estate planning, find a library to donate them to, because uh, it's a lot of physical possessions. And I've tried, you can't live just inside a structure made of the books. You can sleep on them. It is not super comfortable. Uh, I choose not to stress and concentrate on staying adorable. Uh, yes, I, 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 I understand this comment, right? I get it. I, I get it. Uh, it puts things into perspective, but I'm also passionate about these things and understand why people were angry, right? I've been upset. I understand. So I like to look at it from both angles. Now, uh, we did talk about the epic collections, which you know is the inferior way to collect these. Uh, so I have. Uh, my epic expert. Curtis, here. you can't let that comment slide. You can't. You can't let him get away with that. All right, Curtis, <laughs> say your five minute spiel about the epic collection and let's move on. Sorry, I just got here. What are we talking about today? You can you give me a, well you give me a brief about. rundown of what's going on? Here? I'm not doing it again. Oh, well, really, really no. quick. Uh, please clar clarify Massacre Prelude, Inferno Prologue, or Events. Can I assume Road to Onslaught and Aftermath will be published in the event line? Absolutely, you can. Yes, I think, and I'm not kidding about Inferno Aftermath. That will come one day. I'm not announcing anything. I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty damn sure based on Prelude to the Massacre, we are going to get what you just said there. Road to Onslaught, uh, after, Onslaught Aftermath, or they could call it the Trial Gambit, even though that wasn't really that an event. Or uh, what else did you write here? 
Oh, the aftermath. Okay, yes. So what we said, the Inferno aftermath. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and just, just to be clear, we're calling it the event line. That's not officially announced by Marvel. There's no banner on the books. We're just trying to apply some form of taxonomy to this thing that we love to collect, which is how one of the reasons Omar started this entire channel and one of the reasons I started my whole website and one of the reasons Curtis um, has the epic podcast is us just trying to apply a taxonomy and logic and, and fandom to something that Marvel sometimes uh, doesn't label as clearly as we would like it to be labeled. So don't think that this is us saying this is the event line. We're just trying to <laughs> demarcate that in our brains. So it makes some amount of sense. Uh, agreed, but just looking at my shelf, hot damn, that is, <laughs> there is an event line happening, dude. <laughs> All right, Curtis. You came well, in at the right time. I, I'm just coming, like, I, I literally am just coming into the conversation here. What do you want me to address exactly here? <laughs> um, <laughs> Omar said, you, you should come on the screen stream and talk well, about I, I specifically <laughs> say to talk about epics because this is your moment to sign when it comes to why epics are mapped different and yet better in some cases. Well, I think that uh, people are going to agree that in this case, the epics are probably not going to be mapped better. I, I don't think that all of Mutant Massacre is going to show up in the epic collections. Um, just like all of Fall of Mutants is not going to show up in epic, in, in X-Men epics. One, you mean in, in one line? In one line, yeah. Okay. You're going to have to buy the the different lines to get the full story but one of the things about the way that they were doing events back then because they hadn't done events at this point is that uh, all they they kind of had different threads that didn't totally intersect so you could just have just the x-men story in the x-men epics and that's fine um it's it the the crossover isn't as heavy as the way that cross crossovers work these days um so let's see here if you're going to like mutant massacre i think because we already have volume 12 of the epics and we <clears throat> already have volume 17 there's very limited space for volumes uh 13 to 16 which are going to include um Asgardian Wars, Mutant Massacre, Fall of Mutants, and Inferno. We got to fit all of that into those those books, along with any other um, mini series that they want to collect as well. So they're only going to collect the X Men specific titles in the until, X Men epic collections until we get to Inferno, right? Because in Inferno we have to <clears throat> collect X Factor in there. It, yeah, it will have to have X Factor, but it won't have any of the other. Uh, it won't have New Mutants in it. Um, because that was, again, another thread that went off in a different direction. And while it does happen at the same time, it's not essential to read the New Mutants thread if you're going with the Madeline Pryor thread. Gotcha. Um, Marvel, uh, the Mutant Massacre prelude won't have letter pages or every extra from Uncanny 5 or x Fact. No, no. They never, like, any of the events don't have any of the letter pages. So it'll be different. Or... They'll have some of the extras, but not all the extras. <laughs> Can you please ask for different cover choices at the very least? <laughs> please. I, 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 I'll be honest with you, DV. I wipe my hands clean of asking for different covers because I, 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 I piss them off enough with suggestions because it, it all goes back to, if you've been here for a while, the uh, Jason Aaron Thor Omnibus Volume 1. When I announced the covers, there wasn't an Ezad Ribbage cover or a Russell Dodderman cover, and people were upset, and, the, and so I told Marvel, so they changed them. And when I announced those covers, people were like, well, that's those that's great, but those aren't good covers. Can you get them to change them again? <laughs> and, I, and I did, and they changed them. And then they found out that the Ezad Ribbage cover was not going to be a wraparound cover, so people were upset about that. They asked, can I ask Marvel to change that? Oh, man. And, I, and I think at that point I said, well, the last time I asked, I could tell people were upset. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you, you got to choose your battles, right? Uh, so it, that was one that I don't, I mean, I made for this just because there is one particular cover I would love to see collected in here. Um, but go, go ahead, Curtis. 
Um, oh, I don't know. Um, so I, I want to bring something up to both of you. Um, we'll come back to Ultimate Spider-Man, but there is another book. This is another one that's going to be an issue for a few reasons. X-Men Extinction Agenda and X-Men's uh, Days of Future Present were two oversized hardcovers that fit in between Jim Lee and Chris Claremont Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2. They're long out of print. They're super expensive. And people, and I suggested to Marvel, you know, how about putting two together? Because this is long before I thought about Uncanny 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And, and then release that as an omnibus, you know, because people that got Jim Lee 1 and 2, the reprints, don't have this and haven't had a chance to buy this. So it's something that, uh, that people voted for, along with like Bishop's Crossing and Executioner's Song. But I wanted to tackle this one first because it's the first crossover outside of everything, right? Outside of Mutant Massacre, or Fall of the Mutants, and Inferno. The next one is Extinction Agenda and Days of Future Present. Holy crap. This is another one that's going to have the Do I Wait for Uncanny? Or new, uh, you and I mapped New Mutants 4, right? We included all of Extinction Agenda because it's such an important story. And if you look at the mapping of... This is long before, like, if you look at the mapping of the Epic Collections, right, they, they, these are the ones, the end of the beginning of New Mutants includes all of Extinction Agenda. Um, and if you look at Days of Future Present, I know it's the Days of Future Past oversized hardcover. You know, this collects that four-issue crossover through the annuals. That's also collected in here. But interesting enough, and Curtis, you can correct me because I had to double check. It's partially collected in this one. It doesn't have Fantastic Four, the annual in here, which kicks off Days of Future Present. But they're not as yeah. they're not as involved in that story at yeah, that point. They don't yeah. they don't appear in those early issues. Okay. So the question is if ever they do an X-Men Extinction Agenda omnibus with Days of Future Present attached, it's like you know, it's things that people have to think about. Well, do I want to get that now or do I want to wait until New Mutants annual number or New Mutants Omnibus 4, which hasn't been announced, right? Not even sure if it's going to be in the works. Or do I wait for Uncanny X-Men Omnibus volume? My goodness. Nine or ten. How many years is that down the road? Either and of you... course, this is a little different, right? Because it's like we're talking about years. We're not talking like on the the, the coattails of a book that just came out. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to add that part in. Yeah. I mean, I think if you just want the material, you just got to jump on it whenever it comes. The, this one is a definitely different case than the, the this uh, Mutant Massacre because <laughs> they're not coming out at this pretty much the same time. Um, Omar, question for you. Relatively speaking... How long do Omnis stay in X Men Omnis stay in print before they disappear completely? Oh, that is oh gosh, Curtis. Of course, you would ask that. Um, well, everything that has been released so far this year is still in print, like the new X Men reprint. Uh, Uncanny Five. I think the Barry Windsor Smith cover. Please, please, if you know in the chat is running low in stock or out of print. But that's also before they started doing uh, shorter print runs, right? They were still doing the old COVID days print runs, yeah. and now they're focusing more on, oh, pre-orders. So let's shrink those orders down some. So I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of the next X-Men omnibus that comes out too. I guess it would be New Mutants, right? No, Excal. No, no. Yeah, New Mutants Omnibus Volume 3, because Excalibur got delayed until next year. So that will be interesting. Uh, dude, hey, if I send you a link, will you jump in here too? Because I haven't seen you in forever. Riley, I was just saying to Omar that I haven't seen you for so long. Um, and I think this is a really good topic to talk about, right? It, it's something that we hypothetically mapped in Map My X, and it was a lot of fun. And now it's kind of become reality. So if they could just do a reversible cover for this Mutant Massacre um, Prelude Omnibus that has Uncanny X-Men Volume 5 on the inside that you can just <laughs> choose which one you wanted. 
I think they should problems. just do reversible covers in general, but um, but that's a another topic. Curtis, I want to ask you something that I think is adjacent to this topic. Okay. Clearly, as I, I buy every epic in Marvel, as do you, as we can see behind me. But do you buy uh, X-Men epics? Yes. I, oh, I yeah. have a complete collection of every Marvel epic. That is my line. I, I just do omnis for fun on the side. So I'm I'm officially <laughs> Team Curtis. So oh, you just you just, uh, just for fun. Shot through the heart. So uh, Curtis, this hurts. How does it make you, knowing that we all want a complete epic bookshelf, how do you feel when things like un Extinction show up across multiple solicits? Because we all know it's going to happen. And like you and you have this epic shelf and it's beautiful and it's everything you've ever wanted. But you know that multiple books contain huge swaths of the same issues. Like as the epic guru of the internet, um, what does that make you feel in, in your heart of hearts? Um, okay, so I know I understand the value of having the whole um thing collected in one book but uh, oh yeah good good to see ya um but we have um all of us who are our age bracket we come from the days of buying the single issues and we had all of these events collected in like 20 different books and you had to take each one out of plastic or whatever so yes. <laughs> for so something like uh mutant massacre to have it in three different books instead of one different book it's not a huge deal to me if i want to read it i'll just pull all three of them off the shelf and it's not it's not for me it's not a huge inconvenience it's way more inconvenient to take I, out I, the boxes and pull out the comic and read 20 pages and then pull out the next comic and read another 20 pages that's annoying yeah i greatly respect everybody who still is in the floppy business i mean i, I have thousands of floppies but I, I so prefer just pulling off the, the right epic and knowing it's going to have the story I want that's relevant to that title. Yep. And if it double dips a little bit, that's because it's relevant to that specific title. Instead of, I mean, I remember downstairs in my garage right now, there's short boxes where, especially as we started to get into event one shots, it's like, well, where am I going to put my one copy of that side issue? Or if two teams appeared together in another book, I probably have three different copies of the entirety of Days of Future present because right. i have it with my uh fantastic four short box i have it with my <laughs> x-men actually probably four because i originally was going to bind all those books before we had all these collections so it's like yeah i, I this is how i was going to do it anyway um and i was going to have to hunt down all these floppies four times over so just put them in the damn epics so, is my position out of curiosity am i the only moron that keeps single issues like the x-men going to the texas state fair next to his omnis uh, because I know that will never be reprinted in anything. And at one point, <laughs> not so the clown. I'm not so the clown. Well, at one point, I had X Men and the Micronauts, and now, my goodness, that might actually show up in a book, not an X Men book, but a book. Uh, and uh, before I go any further, I do want to introduce my uh, next guest that just decided to pop in and so kind. <laughs> Everybody, this is uh, Riley, the Omnibus Collector, the original Omnibus Collector, I guess. Yeah, the original. Hello. Omnibus. How's it going, man? Thank you for uh, coming on here and talking about this. Yeah, madness. yeah. Good to good to talk to you. Good to see you, Peter and Curtis. How are you all doing? Very good. Thanks so for good. asking. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is a big announcement that uh, that we kind of nailed. <laughs> what a couple <laughs> years ago or something? <laughs> about three years, right? Gosh, gosh. It's been about three three years, maybe longer. My goodness. Uh, but even then, we were like, well, hypothetically speaking, this is the way they're going to do it. And then we got Uncanny 5, and that started the whole, oh, we're, <laughs> we're going to have options. Holy crap, what does that mean? I remember um, kind of, you know, we were a little bit at each other's throats with that one. Yes, As I alluded to. We're very earlier. passionate about these things. <laughs> yeah, we were. Uh, I know I was. I was team. This needs to be uh, a road to mutant massacre or something like that. And then uh, I think uh, Peter, you were very against my. If I'm not mistaken, you might have been on the opposite end of this. I there. We may have had a dispute in that particular. <laughs> that I, <laughs> it was December, I mean, Riley. Are you going to come down December from Manga 4th. Mountain to buy this book? 2020. Oh yeah, I, I I know that it's it's popularly thought that because my content right now is is so skewed towards manga that I don't even like touch, ew Western comics. But I I still buy new like omnis every week. 
Good for you, man. Good for you. That's right. Not Epic Collections, Curtis. You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> he either likes like them really, really big or really, really small. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, are the days of feature present extinction agenda related enough to for an event omni omnibus you suggest the contents are related and are supposed to be collected together you can't call it x-men <laughs> the Adam that is true but they are sort of related because they are right around the same time it's that extinction agenda time like that is some people would argue the first appearance of gambit happens in that annual of days of future present and it's a right around the time of the Extinction Agenda. Yeah, Storm is still a kid in that in that story. I think. Yeah, yeah you're going to make present. me whip out the the like the full on reading order here to explain where it fits, but they are they are very close to adjacency. And and we also around that kind of going into that era or that that's going into an era where we have a lot of these as we've called them gap filler collections, where a lot of them just kind of like they they collect what needs to be collected and they slap a title on there. To sell it somehow, but it's not something that's like absolutely percent, which uh, it's not a hundred percent fully cohesive start to end. But they, you know, it it works. Because when I mentioned Inferno Prologue, David was in the chat and he was like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "Because yeah, I wanted it like people needed it to be reprinted in an omnibus format, right? It was yeah. released as an oversized hardcover." And he's like, an, uh, "Is there an Inferno Prologue?" And I was like, "Yeah, this book." And I showed him on the camera. And he's like, "Oh man, that's right." <laughs> We have to come up with a name. I just, uh, and I remember, oh my God, people were going to hate me for that. But I remember when they were going to reprint that, he loved the idea of having the direct market be called Inferno Prologue and the standard edition called Fall of the Mutants Aftermath. Because I was like, this is how you get people to get it again. And he was like, that's, a, that's so good. That's a really good idea. But I think it was the ISBN that would have to be different. And then the, book market would throw a fit so <laughs> now uh, if you want to get really specific i just pulled up my my chronology notes here for many characters oh they gosh. appear directly after days of future present into extinction agenda there are a few issues that you could squeeze in between for cyclops he does make one stop in x factor 59 between the annual crossover and extinction agenda but for other characters they travel directly from the annual crossover into extinction agenda so they are truly adjacent for a few characters there's a couple of issues you could wedge in between them but those stories are absolutely sequential for the majority of the cast of all of the xbox at that time so let's see here. Mutant Massacre Prelude is my last upgrade. I'm sticking with what I have the rest of the way going forward. New Mutants Omnis and X-Factor Omnis to fill the gap. And I think, yeah, if you're an X-Men guy, you're eventually going to have the event collected at least in one of those, right? And Or, or all of them, maybe. Uh, but much like Epic Collections, when there are annuals, um, Omar admitting to all this, uh, I'm just letting it out, man. And I'm not even drunk. The... Um, when there's crossover annuals in the epic collections, they only focus on the main story that's crossing over, not the backup story. So those backup stories aren't clear. Like if Captain America is crossing over with Avengers and Iron Man and you have that crossover in an Avengers epic collection, you, you don't have the backup stories from the Cap annual or the Iron Man annual. It's usually just the Avengers complete with the backup stories. Is that a yes, Curtis? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man of many words. Uh, thank you for that. So there's one book I want to talk about, which kind of brought this up. So now, you know, now people have a better understanding of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like the extinction agenda and days of future present. Um, so, you, you know, you have choices. If ever they make an announcement of that omnibus, you have every right to skip it and wait for a new mutants four or buy it and, you know, hope for the best. And maybe it won't, come out in another book so <laughs> i thought bar was here earlier this this chat's so easy to catch up when bar's not here um, bar was definitely here i will also literally. say too that we used to approach all this from a position of scarcity of like well if i don't get this omnibus there is no way to read this issue unless i go buy the floppy which now just is not a thing not only is it an omnibus not only is it 
probably maybe also an epic but there's also marvel unlimited so this idea that you're not gonna that there's an issue you can't read i'm not saying that it's not valid to want a total shelf look at what's behind me people but i'm just saying that like there was definitely a point in 2013 in 2012 where it was like well i must buy this days of future past um hardcover if i do not buy it i will never get to read this story uh and that is not a thing currently, at least with the X Men line. Certainly, if you're a big sleepwalker, I don't fan, see Obnoxio the thing. Clown. Oh no, Obnoxio the Clown was printed in that uh, crack, right? Or not crack? Crazy, uh, crazy, crazy. Yeah, dang it. But the X Men at the State Fair, Texas State Fair, no Still sir. Mm. Heroes X Men uh, Pizza Hut comics. <laughs> Hero, don't, I will go down a rabbit hole. I have I had to hunt down those X Men Pizza Hut comics. I, there's <laughs> multiple years of them. I, I remember the idea of having like heroes for hope and like I hope one day I have this signed by everybody. Woo. Uh let's see here. Uh have you noticed that some omnibuses are not any bigger than oversized hardcovers, but are like fifty dollars more? Yes, in some cases, absolutely. Which they don't do a lot of oversized hardcovers these days. Uh hold on here. An example is the Planet of the Apes original Marvel year. So disappointed with the size of this the cost and that's mainly due to the restoration because there were no masterworks to pull from and this is why i always say like the masterworks are very important for some of these lines because they do all the heavy lifting and the epics and the omnis you know gain from that i'm usually against going the event omni route like king and black daredevil by chip except for x-men i want all the event omnis for that maybe it's because i have the event omni first probably yeah it definitely is a, is it all depends on your taste. Uh, so let's talk about this because this is another thing that's going to happen. Um, I announced the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 4. I'm very happy for other people that love this title and want this book, all of it collected in Omnibus format. It looks like it might happen. That's insane. Good for you all for pre-ordering a book that was liquidated. People didn't think it was going to sell and yet it sold like crazy, had another print run and then a Volume 2 and a 3. And now Volume 2 is out of print. So you cats are crazy good for you all now if you look at the content of this this collects ultimate spider-man 112 through 133 and the annual three which i like that annual and the requiem story and ultimate spider-man 1 through 15 then i announced this book this is the reprint of ultimate comics spider-man death of spider-man omnibus and when we were collecting these things we had oversized hardcovers of ultimate spider-man and the very next collection was this. You may have seen like an old uh, reading order video that I made. And I have all the OHCs right next to this. And if you look at this, it collects Ultimate Comics Spider-Man 15, which just one double dip, right? And then 150 to 160, Ultimate Comics Avengers versus New Ultimates and Ultimate Comics Fallout 1 through 6. And I remember when I, uh, when I got this one. I, I suggested uh, to David and his team, how about instead of calling it Ultimate Comic Spider-Man, the death of Spider-Man, why don't we call it, or why don't you all call it, sorry, Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5? Because it's practically the next book. And they debated, and I mean like debated for like a week, and then at the end of the day, uh, he did get, David got back to me and saying, no, it looks like this is an event book. This is what his team told him. And the mapping is going to be different in uh, Volume 5. Now, they didn't go into detail. They mm -hmm. didn't tell me when that book is coming out, but they did say that. And that's why in my video, I when I announced this, I was like, now, if you're wondering why it's not called this, well, that's because it's different. So this is going to be another book where people are like, oh, I just bought this, and now he's announcing it. Or I think. I don't know for sure, right? I assume there's the sales of four are going to be justifying a volume five. Um mm -hmm. But it's another one to think about, right? Like what, what would even be on here? So I kind of like did this little thing. So I don't think they would collect the Avengers versus new Ultimates. I don't think it's that. Maybe aspects of it, but not the whole thing. Ultimate Comics Fallout? Probably. But they well, can do this. Some of it. Right? You just have to be in there, but not all of them. But if they've got room, then why not just throw it in there? Yeah. It seems like it's wait, 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 Kurt, wait, no, wait. Oh. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Peter. What the hell did you just say, Curtis? What, what, what? What, what did you just say? You said if they got room, why don't they throw it all in here? 
Oh, absolutely. I, I Did you not the- hear the complaints about this damn book? That was oh, the I know. Yeah. <laughs> that exactly. It is all thrown in there. <laughs> um, so uh, you all are familiar with this era, right? Uh, what could be added oh, what are to all this book? Comics. It's the silly, like, reimagining of our favorite characters in a silly, ridiculous way. <laughs> anyway, but some people really like it, apparently. So this I is would definitely like to point out that, oh, that Curtis just argued against the epic map, mapping strategy for the omnibus. The, <laughs> the epic mapping, mapping strategy is like, well, if Spider-Man's not a big deal in those issues, it probably shouldn't be in the epic. But since it's an omnibus, uh, Curtis is like, it'll fit, get it in there. <laughs> so, uh, hey, hey a, a little counter argument there. I, I totally think that if the, if the issue has backup stories that don't have anything to do with the character, that it probably should just go in the same, in, in that book. Like, um... I, I love the fact that the Hawkeye Epic Collection Volume 2 has yes. oh, all of yes. Solo Avengers, including the backup stories, because otherwise some of these will just never be reprinted. And uh, never I think it's that. a great idea. And so in this case, if we're going to do 2.5 issues of Ultimate Fallout, and this is an omnibus that has a huge page count, then why not just put the whole miniseries in there? It all does kind of relate to all of the events going on in, this, in the uh, story anyway. I'd say maybe maybe Spider Men would be shoved in. Has that been? No, that was in the Miles stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, but the first, yeah, because Miles hadn't been in. Yeah, yeah, that happens during the Miles era. The only other books I was thinking, somebody actually, somebody had, and if you have ideas, by all means, please let me know. Because, like I said, this isn't something that's in currently in the works. It could be sometime. Um. Now I'm worried that the Spider-Man will go out of print before we get an Ultimate Five, and that's always the case, too, right? It's like what what Peter was saying. How do you know? How do you know when something's going to go out of print? Or I'm sorry, it was Curtis that was bringing up the the cells. Like, I mean, pretty, I'm pretty sure they, the X-Men books have been still on. We've we've my web. There we go. There we go, Peter. That's Stop. great. Oh, we have a name. Yep. That's there great. we go. Um. They could put Ultimate Team up in there. That's what I was thinking, even though that stuff comes from the early years. Yeah. The, but it would be a way to collect it. It's just a weird, like, I, I never considered the possibility of an Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5 because it's, it to me, literally just seems like it would completely double dip on Death of Spider-Man. Yeah. Ultimate Doomsday Trilogy. I kept calling it Ultimate Enemy, which was the first mini. Yeah, it, it definitely is interesting to see how it's going to be mapped. And then if it has everything that Ultimate Spider-Man, Death of Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus has, will it be like the case like, you know, the Prelude to the Massacre? Or if or will it contain more issues? Then it's like, oh, crap, do I keep both? Because there was always a chance that I was joking, but I mean... That prelude to the massacre could have contained something that was not in any of the um, omnis, like X Factor or, or Uncanny, like the Iceman miniseries, something oh, like don't that. Even get, don't even start. Oh, uh, but I mean, it could have happened, right? No, but I mean, if, right? If we really wanted to talk about Marvel being evil, then this the X Men Mutant Massacre prelude would have like one or two things that aren't going to be in either of the other books. The yeah. fact that it actually splits up perfectly between the other books shows that they're not, if they were truly, truly evil, they would have put the Iceman miniseries and the Dazzler and Beast miniseries in there <laughs> just to twist the I would have been okay even without that. Uh, the, the even, uh, me too, but as Riley and you and I all fought over three years ago, um, they all really belong in the Defenders omnibus. They have nothing to do with X-Factor. They're separated by several Defenders issues between the beginning of X-Factor and where they are. What happened to Kiss? Keep it simple, stupid. Um, I don't know. Out the window. Out the window. It's 2023. Huh. Yeah, th- this is another one that... I don't know. Right for them to add... I, no, I am staying out of that. I do not want to piss anybody else. <laughs> uh, the mapping is good. It's just the timing of the announcement. And I think that seems to be yeah. a lot of the people's problems, right? I, and I completely get it. I understand. At the, at the very least, like, if, if you're like myself and you didn't pre-order X-Factor, like, it, the announcement came before X-Factor. 
that's at least nice. But I know that there's a lot of people who are on the uh, on the hook for X Factor already because of pre-orders. That's well, of those I think those pre-orders were canceled because the next solicits will have X Factor in it. X Factor was pushed back until July oh. of 2024. And oh, actually, yeah, Prelude to the Massacre is August, and X Factor is July. Wow. So really, I mean, you're right. There is that, right? It, um, I going back. I forget who commented it, but but yes. the ultimate Doomsday trilogy, you know, Enemy Mystery and and Doom could be something that would fit in. Um, I, I think that could make sense for Spider Man. But I had always was he even in that? I totally don't remember him being in that story at all. Are you talking about the like the the Galactus story? That no, one, not, not the, the Galactus Galactus trilogy, the the Doom uh, Ultimate. Oh, Doomsday, right? And oh, yeah, With yeah, Nick okay. Fury and whatever. Yeah, Enemy Mystery and Doom, and it's you know it's all written by Bendis. Um, yeah, Spider Man's in there. I I always in my head was mapping it with Fantastic Four. But yeah, why did I do that? Maybe that's why I was thinking of Galactus. I was thinking of Galactus as well. Fair, fair. Okay, and so the chat should be thing. Fantastic Four. What was that called? Ultimate <sighs> Nightmare. Ultimate Nightmare. Was it? Yeah, well, it was an ultimate nightmare to read. That's for damn sure. Um, <laughs> somebody was suggesting Ultimatum in here too. Oof. That's another one that hasn't been available in an omnibus format. Ultimates three and Ultimatum. I'm honestly surprised about that. I think yeah, Ultimatum should be in any Ultimate omnibus, just that whole mini series. But it's one of the things where like Marvel doesn't put the big events in these, like with. No, I, I shouldn't say that. It's not necessarily the case with omnibuses. But the I know the modern epics they they're not putting the huge events in mixed in with the other issues. And the ultimatum would fall into the, that category, I think. This, this is really, this is so true. Ultimate end should have been in the Miles Morales on this without spoiling anything. Absolutely. Because there's a character that returns in that storyline that just shows up in the next omnibus. And you're like, wait, what? what when did this character? And, and I, yeah, that's kind of what Curtis uh, was talking about when he talks about the mapping of the epics. There's so many events going on during these times. Some of these events should be built into the mapping of the epic collections for modern epic collections yep. yeah ultimate three and ultimatum will be the worst omni of all time. <laughs> but but it's inevitable <laughs> but i mean if you think, but look at the art though man david finch and joe mad in one omnibus <laughs> that will sell um cattle is there a cattle uh, cataclysm omni yet the oversized hardcover i think was pretty complete yeah, I think you're right. I still have that one. Okay, so Ultimate is Marvel's... But that's, an, that's another great example, though, where Miles is in some other parts of Cataclysm, including Ultimate's Last Stand, but the Miles omnibus itself does not include that. It only includes the Cataclysm Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 3. So again, the, there's a difference between getting an event book, which has every little morsel of the event, and getting a Spider-Man book, which has just the incredibly plot-relevant things for Miles, which, you know, Mar was written that way. You should be able to read the Miles stuff without reading the whole event. With, with the exception of the end, which I think should have been added. Right. Yeah. But um, Cataclysm is a great example of like, no, you do not need all of Cataclysm in the Miles line. Oh, no, 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 no. no. You're, 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 yeah. you're right. So Ultimate is Marvel's version of DC's Crisis. It's like they get stuck on a specific world that sounds cool and stick with them for decades. No, it's kind of like... Don't bring that DC logic to the stream bar. You can't... Don't, we don't want that DC logic. <laughs> my, I mean, my name is Crisis, but still. Well played. I mean, uh, Omar, do you? Ultimate Universe reading order. I just have the Ultimate X Men. I um I wanted to wait till future announcements for maybe Ultimate Fantastic Four would be cool. I know people have been wanting that and um, Ultimate X Men. I think we need one more to wrap up that series. Secret Wars is their crisis. Yes, but that was more like a soft reboot though. Mainly it was just, hey, we're gonna get rid of the Ultimate Universe and Miles is now in the six one six and. I want to say him and the maker are about the only two things that came out of that crossover that are still relevant in, well, I mean, not anymore, right? Cause we are getting ultimate Spider-Man again by Hickman. Uh, do you think there'll be some, the same double dipping with amazing Spider-Man uh, in the creator centric clone saga? I think before we even get there, Joshua, let's talk about the, the big one. And that is uh Roger Stern's Spider-Man. 
because there's definitely going to be double dipping. Uh, we, we have Amazing Spider-Man 6. Whenever that comes out, that will bridge the gap between 5 and Roger Stern. And keep in mind, you're going to be double dipping if you get all the Spider-Man lines. Because you have Spectacular Spider-Man where Roger Stern first started. And mm -hmm. a lot of those issues are collected in that Roger Stern Omni. And then you have Amazing Spider-Man, which Roger Stern took over, right? And so if you get like Spectacular Omnibus Volume 2 when that comes out and Amazing 6 or 7, sorry, that would, I mean, that's everything. With the exception of the Hobgoblin Libs, which is something they should have added because I love that miniseries. Um, I still have the trade because it's not even in it's not even in epics yet, is it, Curtis? Nope. It's where he comes back and writes the story that he wanted to tell. Yeah. Yep. So you can probably skip some Amazing Spider-Man volumes. Maybe we're just saying maybe, but look to the mapping of the masterworks to kind of get an idea of where Volume Six will end. And the mapping of Spectacular 2 to kind of get an idea. The problem with Spider-Man versus the X-Men is that I don't see a creator-centric post-stern Amazing Spider-Man omnibus the way X-Men have the event lines. No, because there are no real big crossovers within Spider-Man until you get to... Well, we have one, right? We have Spider-Man versus Venom in the 90s, which collects the Maximum Carnage storyline. And uh, it's a very Venom-centric book, too. How about Craven's Last Hunt? Was that, but, the, the, but that's not an omnibus, right? It was just a deluxe edition. They could make one eventually, I suppose. Curtis, did you not hear all these angry people earlier today? You so here, to here's the thing: is that not not everything Marvel has to put out books, even omnibuses that are not numbered, uh, because there are people out there who just don't want to have ten. X-Men Omnibus is on their shelf and, you know, they entered comics, especially, like, I think that the age that we're at is um, a lot of the, uh, that's that's their demographic for these Omnis and the, we all entered X-Men in the 80s. So Mutant Massacre, uh, Fall of the Mutants, all of that kind of stuff, if people only want the stuff that they're nostalgic for because that's what they read when they are a kid, then those books should be available. And, um, and and rather than having like just one X Men Uncanny X Men Volume Five on their shelf, so they they both have a place. It says like, the same with the Roger Stern stuff. Roger Stern, uh, it's great to have that all in just one book that doesn't have a number on the spine. Well, I mean, and that's why those Claremont Lee omnibuses exist. Like we we could have just waited to get there. Uh, forever until the Mar Marvel Masterworks got there. They could have stopped reprinting no way. now that the Marvel Masterworks are getting closer. No, but I, I, I think I speak for all the X-Men fans. I wouldn't have, I, if I didn't own that book, I would not have waited until the Masterworks. I mean, we're talking what, right. at least and there's, five, and there's five more years of Masterworks and then probably thousands 10 years. of people around the world who, when they get into X-Men and you see this on Reddit all the time and they're like, I don't know, where should I read X-Men if I like this new Hickman stuff? People say Claremont Lee, Claremont Lee, you want to read when, like that some things just exist as a milestone. Some things yeah. just exist in an evergreen state and like those should not have numbers because then you have to introduce fans into this whole wild world instead of just saying, buy this book, it's going to answer your questions. That's why the Loki omnibus exists. People are rabid for Loki. Do we want? To, do you want to go to my Loki guide and sift out every single issue where I said he had a decent, um, more than two panel <laughs> appearance in Thor, or do you just want to buy the Loki omnibus? No, I, we, even we, as the person who did that guide, which took twenty hours, I would say just go spend a hundred dollars on the Loki omnibus. <laughs> the um, those Claremont and Lee omnis are. Do we know? Like, are those going to be reprinted as like numbered omnis? Is no, that, no, those not. are. Those, uh, keep in mind, those were printed years ago, right? Like over a right. decade ago, where yeah. they had, I know it's hard to, like, there. it's crazy to think about, but there are people that have known the Omnibus game, like, their entire lives, right? Like, yeah, yeah born, because so when they, 2000 and, 2003, 2000 and, right? So I'm saying 2003, 2004. 2004 was the first Barnes and Noble edition of the, the Ultimate, Ultimate Spider-Man. And then yeah. 2006. Maybe wow. it was the first Fantastic Four on the bus. So, 
back then we didn't know there was going to be an uncanny volume yeah. two or a fantastic but fantastic four volume two came out and i that's when i thought oh oh hell yes they're, they're, they're gonna do the whole thing i'm in the which the main, is crazy the main reason i i bring up that is because something i was thinking to myself uh the other day after the the mutant massacre road to prologue whatever it's called omnibus was announced was um you know we know that they're gonna be volume six volume seven volume whatever of uncanny x-men and mm -hmm. if if claremont and lee was reprinted as numerical in that series my thought was i wonder if they continue going further because so much of the stuff after that like bishop's crossing etc does need to be reprinted in omnibus format and I was like, huh, I wonder if they'll like keep going. And we have this massive line of like more than a dozen omnibus for, for the X-Men. I mean, and I, I, I wonder if they ever sit down and look at their old mappings. Cause I'm, I know when, you know, we vote for reprints, they were thinking, oh, we should have done that a little bit different. Right. Like thinking ahead, like, cause eventually we're going to go into this era because eventually, yeah, X Men Lee and Claremont will be replaced by Uncanny X Men Volume Nine. I say nine, depending on how many crossovers they put into these books. Well, Inferno would be the big one. Um, and it, and that's just crazy because then that loses X Factor, right? Like those issues that yeah. were plotted by Jim Lee and Will Spertasio. and it's one of my favorite X Factor stories, The End Game. Um. Yeah, it, it's crazy to think about Jim Lee ruined the X Men with his pol uh, political play, which forced uh, Claremont out. Uh, that's a story for another day, though. This whole Krakoa era of X Men Marauders, Hellions, etc., is going to be a nightmare to collect for folks for years from now. And we know that they stopped doing oversized hardcovers, right? Like I've, I've mentioned that they're not really focusing on those anymore. They're focusing on bigger books, Omnis. And I think the last one, The Fall of X, is actually going to be a trade paperback. Yeah, yeah. They just—I not... just saw them hit the Amazon fish. I know Omar. To Omar, it's still invisible until it's the actual still it's in the catalog. <laughs> Omar can't acknowledge that Amazon good. fish. Dude, exists. I learned the hard way in two, uh, 2007, 2008. I sold something I can't remember, and they canceled the stupid book. <laughs> <laughs> and it I happens said, sometimes. Well, now I don't really sell anything, right? Like I give things away, and I'm like, never again am I selling or giving anything away until I have the stupid book in my freaking in hand yes I, I yeah it happened to me one time and i always remind people of that from time to time so all the folks that sold uncanny five thoughts and prayers i hope this book comes out <laughs> that would be awful right like, all it takes is one boat to get stuck in one canal somewhere in the book you were counting on all she wrote you know. my Favorite X-Team is X-Factor. I only want to collect X-Factor except the Krakoa crap. Is it possible to have X-Factor Omnis that collect post-Peter David stuff from Volume 1? Yes, um, but you'll, you're going to have to wait, right? You're going to have to... Uh, Arnestad, I, I want to talk to you, my friend, because in my read with my daughter, who's right now waking up for school just on the other side of this wall, we just read uh, X-Factor 105 yesterday, which is when it comes out that Malice has been behind the plot to try to kill Polaris all this time, and Sinister comes back to collect Malice. I forgot how amazing that, like, 90 to 105 run of X-Factor is after Peter David. In my mind, I just filed it away as, like, post peter david the issues just hit over and over and over again there's the brian Matthews. hitch art there's young Dracema art it's incredible people polaris looks amazing strong guy looks amazing and the story is so good i think x factor could it be my favorite book going into flank's covenant it might be i used to think x force was my favorite book in the line but it might actually be x factor in that period so i am ready for the x factor line to be completely covered in omnibuses because we i tried. want that art oversized it's friggin gorgeous that, that was Hitch cool. issue is amazing I, I didn't know you felt that way about hitch i i do love uh that era i thought it was alan davis that's why i feel that way is <laughs> early, that, uh, early hitch the, inked the, by the, andy lanning looks i i opened the issue and i said to my daughter i bet mark farmer inked this because it looked so much like alan davis, like alan davis. but it was hitch <laughs> and lanning that's the Dematis, right? Or oh, Demateus. Sorry about that, uh, Curtis. Apologies for that. Um, right? Right before Howard Mackey took over the book? Yes. Yeah. She yeah I like that. I, I, but I'm a big fan of also what, 
what's his name? Uh, Jeff Matsuda. Love his art. And Jan Dersima. Yeah, she was great. I really, very, very underrated artist for her so time. So good. I like forgot how epic the figures are, the, how big they are on the page. Anyway, sorry. you to I totally want to tear, but I just wanted to show my support for no, no, X Factor okay. books, which is ultimately why I might still buy that X Factor omnibus because I want a whole X Factor line. Well, that that was one that I remember I tried to ask if they could go all the way to 105 yeah, so it would map perfectly with uh, the Fatal Attra not Fatal Attractions, I'm sorry, uh, Phalanx Covenant. Yeah. And they said, no, we're just going to put Peter David's stories in there, which is fine. It's a Peter David centric book. I get it. Uh, I was just trying to map things out to get my whole shelf to look <laughs> like Omnis. And now they're making it. They're giving me more options, but it's a little more complicated than it used to be. Steve Epting was killing it in X Factor at the time. Yeah, Epting was doing that. That was a uh, Tom Palmer on Inks too. Off topic. If I stop at Inferno and X Lives and X Devs, should I still get Sense of Sinister? Sense of Sinister is a lot of fun. If, but I strongly suggest reading the Immortal X Men and X Men Red, leading into the Sense of Sinister. Those are really good Sense series. Sense of Sinister is a lot like Age of Apocalypse, and that a lot of things happen in it, and some of the things matter. But it's it's separate. Like if you never read Sense of, just think about if you had never read Age of Apocalypse, and then you were like, "Who's this Sugar Man guy?" Since and and like what like Sense of Sinister functions similarly, not exactly the same, but there are some things after it that you would be like, "Where did what's her name Mother well, Revolution come from?" I was going to say at the same time, I read all of Sense of Sinister, and I could have been outside kicking a ball or or doing a handstand instead of reading that. It doesn't. It doesn't really have a direct <laughs> bearing on on that. <laughs> Dude, that first line though, to me, my mies, that cracked me up so hard. Like an X Men book, like it's just Sinister awakening all his own clones. Uh, dropping by, just tell you for people that I love you guys. Well, we love you right back. Man. Uh, old X Factor by Peter David was great, but his 2000 era was so boring. Warren, we had a good thing going, and now you screwed it up again by saying something dumb. <laughs> That, that's the worst comment I've seen in a while. <laughs> Warren's got some freaking thoughts, man. Uh, will Shattershot ever be collected in an omnibus format? Well, it's only available in oversized hardcover, which is long out of print, but it's another one of those things that you're going to have to keep in mind. When they reprint it, if they reprint it as an omnibus, eventually that will be taken over by Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 12. So it's a question of do you want it now or do you want it later i guess if you're willing to wait and if you're an x fan like i am an idiot uh no we want it now <laughs> right i don't want to wait i don't want to wait 10 more i'm gonna be 55 by then no i want it now i want to read it in my prime okay 45 is not really my prime my prime would have been 20 something but still my reading prime well i have to have like those first level of readers on to read yeah, back when I could appreciate omnibuses without these glasses on, right? We've all we've all gotten older while we've been. Those were the dude, and I fought it so hard. <laughs> it's like reading a book. I mean, I can take them off, but I won't be able to see what's happening in the back. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> if Prelude to the Mutant Massacre can exist, give me my Inferno after. I, I told you this was going to happen. We were just talking about that. Uh, oh, it's James. Yeah, that that's that's definitely one that will. That was have. when I name checked you, James. That that topic um, exactly. That will have the Judgment Day story that's never been collected in omnibus format or in ever oversized hardcover format. It only in what? Started. Only in which format? Sorry. Oh, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> What's Curtis going on about? <laughs> yes, it's only an epic format, Curtis. We know the superior mapping. <laughs> Do I need to complain about Batman to get a stream like this about DC? I have a lot of complaints. No, Bart, you, you don't have to. You can complain all you want to. Mutant Massacre Prelude won't have the letter pages. Correct. Um, so the truly hardcore will keep Uncanny 5 and get X Factor 1. And I think that that is coming from a completist standpoint, right? Like, you'll have both and you'll end up with more, right? The annual will be more complete in X Factor 1. The Uncanny X-Men annuals will be more complete and you'll have all the extras, plus the restoration from the Marvel Masterworks. Uh, Judgment Day? Uh, no. Was it Judgment War? Is that what it was called? The X Factor issues with Paul Smith coming back? Judgment War. Yeah. Judgment, Judgment War. War. Um, uh, apologies for that. Judgment War. It was like a 12 issue series with Paul Smith coming back. 
X Factor does John Carter of Mars. I love those. I know people do not like them. Curtis, you read them, right? What did you think? They were great. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Um, we're all doing glasses off now to pretend to recapture our youth. <laughs> <laughs> now you're testing. Can I really read this without my glasses? I can't see a damn thing. I'm why I'm... did why did mute uh why did Marvel call it the Mutant Massacre Prelude rather than something more awesome like the return of Jean Grey or Rise of the Phoenix? Because Mutant Massacre was already an omnibus, probably because of that, and people actually I think we named it too. Yeah, yeah, I think we named it. So they did it for us. Looking for crisis on the oh, oh, oh. page. Look at Rudy coming in, swinging big. Curtis, wrong. Judgment <laughs> War was also <laughs> in the X Factor Essentials. <laughs> yeah, Curtis. Yes, very true. Uh, I hope Marvel can include Omar on more decision making. Oh no, no! Remember what happened? I got Uncanny Five, and look where we are now. I don't know if you want me in there anymore. <laughs> Uh, instead of just getting his two cents in some vague consulting capacity, we could avoid another prelude debacle. Omar is, is such a reason. Oh, thank you for the kind words. Uh, yeah, it was a it, it, this one. I knew it was going to be an interesting topic. And thank you all for remaining civil and not insulting each other, despite of what you're doing, right? Like wh whether you go one way or the other, except for you epic people. <laughs> I know. We're always civil. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we should uh, – <laughs> uh, we should get crisis to expect this royalty check for the book. Uh, this right here is amazing. This, this, I like he did three of these. I don't know if you caught it. Yeah, earlier. can you go to the epic one? Because people have asked a few times and we've kind of blown by oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I, again, I just wanted to have a second where it's really on screen. People here, have asked go. in the chat if you Screen's have the X Men Volume 5 Omnibus, which unfortunately is not on the slide, and the X Factor Epic Volume 1, do you need Prelude to Mutant Massacre? So as you can see there, there's a massive overlap between the Prelude to Mutant Massacre and X Factor Epic Genesis and Apocalypse, which is the first X Factor Epic. It literally goes one issue past the Prelude to Mutant Massacre. Uh, and then there's an X Factor Epic Volume 2, clearly, which will exist at some point. It's not solicited. We are not announcing it. That will collect X Factor 10 to 20, as well as other materials. So the thing you should take away from this is that the X Factor Epics do not line up exactly to the um, X-Men event omnibus line. As you can see with that like stray uh, X Factor 9. So you'll still be doing okay if you have Uncanny X-Men omnibus five and x factor epic one you won't actually have missed anything but the book breaks in the epic line are for x factor are not going to line up perfectly um up to all of the book breaks in the epic or in the omnibus event line dude this this was a this was so amazing like okay so my of course the x brain went with this but i really should have put up the clip with uh pepe Silve from uh always sunny <laughs> the murder board. Yeah, it's me and me and my murder board. <laughs> that was Peppy Sylvie. Oh, man. I just this called the murder board. <laughs> so good. It's so good. You have outdone yourself. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, I hope people screen grab that and any of the ones that you needed. I, I do. Let's go ahead and stop screen sharing and kind of bring this to an end. I hope I we were able to answer any questions, but let me see if I can grab a couple. Uh, sorry if you already said, Omar, as my internet crapped out, how much approximately of Spidey 6 do you think will contain Roger Stern's run? 50, 30%, 10%? Oh, no. Uh, it wouldn't be 6. It would be 7. Um, Spider-Man 6 still has to go through, oh, my goodness, I think three Marvel Masterworks, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, I'm not looking. like This is off the top of my head. I think it's three Marvel Masterworks before we get to the Roger Stern's era. Now, Spectacular 2 will definitely dip into Roger Stern's epic, like probably a fourth of his, or not epic, I'm sorry, uh, Omnibus. Probably about a fourth of that Omnibus is going to be in Spectacular. No, wait, maybe even a third will be in Spectacular 2. Uh, let me catch up here. I want to see Crisis planning this all out on his pin board with strings going all over the place. Real peppy silly. <laughs> <laughs> so fun story, if people, some people know that on my website, I have an X-Men reading order that I'm always revising and deepening. When I first did it, I got a huge scroll of like butcher paper, like brown paper, and I rolled it out on the floor of my attic and I literally drew where all the issues were and like drew lines <laughs> between them and all. And that was, I wish I kept it. I don't know why I threw it away. It'd be an amazing artifact to have now, especially as I have to go back and reference things. But I literally 
um, Pepe Silva boarded my way through the complete reading order of X-Men from 1963 to, I guess, at the time it was 2013. I, I love that. See, all of that is in my head. Like, I never wrote it down until people started asking me for, like, lists. And I'm like, list? Like, what, you, you want me to write things down? Oh, God, that takes so much longer. Uh, just here, I just wanted to say my piece and say Marvel dropped the ball with this one, but what's new? Well, they, ha they, see they have seen all the comments from the release video because they do look at those uh, comments, which is where they got the idea for the Prelude Massacre, I think, from Uncanny 5. But that's neither here nor there. If they made a Krakoa era ominous like the X-Men by Hickman, which would you want first? Oh, I would love for the stuff to be mapped out, like the Dawn of... Uh, Dawn of X stuff. I think that they did good. Timing is the biggest problem with this prelude. No one seems to care about New Mutants falling through 75% double dipping with the X-Men event omnis because it wasn't announced so close together. I think yep. that's got a lot to do with it. Yep. Um, And can we request Marvel a bedazzled <laughs> Dust Jacket for Dazzler? <laughs> sure. Uh, how would they handle X Factor when they've uh, it gets the pad? I don't think it will line up. Peter, thoughts? I don't think it will. Uh, it will line no, up. I think the pad, it's like, actually, it's a fifth line. We haven't even talked about right. We've talked about title lines, event lines, character lines, some other line that I now forget. But then there's also creator lines, right? That pad yeah. omnibus is well. Not we talked meant about to Lee and yeah. Claremont. Those are creators. That pad omnibus is not going to be a gap that they collect around. They're going to collect right past that. It's going to be the exact same thing we're talking about today. Probably like four years from now, there's going to be a book that has from X Factor 71 probably all the way up to the 90s, and it's going to completely contain that pad book. It's it's guaranteed to happen. There we go. So that, that's that's what we think. Okay, what we really need to be complaining about is the lack of a marble swimsuit omnibus. Make mine spandex. <laughs> uh, yes, see, now that needs to be in an omnibus format, not in a smaller print format like an epic collection. Sorry, Curtis. No, Make, it's fair. I, that should be a gallery edition right there. Oh, oh, my God. There would be so many. There would be like one a year, every summer. Swimsuit gallery. Can you briefly explain the difference in, uh, in Ultimate Spidey and Death of? I had to go back. Oh, uh, we just talked hypothetically what would be in a Volume 5, and people were coming up with ideas. Nothing has been announced for a Volume 5. Right now, everything has been announced is Volume 4, and you could wrap it up with the Ultimate Death of Ultimate Spider-Man or uh, Omnibus, or maybe wait around to see what a Volume 5 will contain. That, that's all we did. Uh, Omar, please let Marvel know a great way to rebuild goodwill is a quick announcement of Inferno Aftermath Omni. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> then, then, but then people be like, what happens when I get an uh, Uncanny 7? <laughs> oh, brother. I'd have to hear about that. Uh, preferably before New Mutants Volume 4, X Factor 3 are out. <laughs> The Omnibuses should have stuck to doing complete runs. They could have created event Omnis from those after that. But I think a lot of this started with event oversized hardcovers. Like we had event trades and then they knew events sold. So people checked out X Factor, checked out Excalibur, checked out Wolverine that weren't buying those titles. So they started doing oversized hardcovers. And then from there, they built Omnis around like Mutant Massacre. I remember it was an oversized hardcover first. Much you know, long before that, a trade. And then later on, they said, oh, well, let's just put a bunch of books together and then and, and call it a massacre omnibus. Omar, what about Chuck Austin's run in Omnibus? <laughs> my bank account is ready, Warren. <laughs> you bring that right to my door. Yeah, that and Peter Milligan and Daniel Way's Wolverine. Day one, baby. Day one. All books I love. Hate those books. But All I'm better still... than the Outback era. <laughs> okay. You know what, man? I've had enough <laughs> of that crap. <laughs> the Outback is the epitome of the X-Men. The worst. <laughs> Love that era, you know, you know how to get me. What about a Mexican Gwen Stacy omnibus? That'd be their bet. Yes, that would be awesome. And you know what to put on that cover. You know, it's funny. Like Curtis and I have talked about like pitching it to Marvel, and if not them, like maybe somebody else uh, would be interested in handling it because you have to go through translations, right? Right. Yeah, well, I think there's some overrated. I don't think I hear anybody talk about how, how great it is, except me. Scotty and I are like this. Okay. We're well, so, you... we're so aligned. <laughs> see a Mike Carry on me. Same, same. I'd love to see that too. 
On the positive side, Marvel may one day release a Spider-Man the next chapter omnibus so we can get the missing issues from the burned Spider-Man omnibus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Manny, that's right. Outback era for life. Like, costume alone on Rogue and Dazzler and super sexy long shot with no sleeves on his arms. <laughs> Everybody was hot. Hot. They got tans. Um, All I want for Christmas is Mike Carey's X-Men. People who don't like the Outback era, right? That was a shocker. Like, there's a lot of things I've learned about my friend Peter today. <laughs> he probably was going through some stuff. Okay, if you're reading yeah. the line at that point, he, I think he needed to, he needed some therapy, and instead of therapy, he was writing the Outback era. That, that is what I <laughs> truly believe. <laughs> While listening to Bon Jovi in the background, slippery one, way. that's that's actually true. Like I that I love that album. Uh, all I want the, for them is to finish Excalibur and Nubians within my lifetime. Connor, I think they'll do that. Oh yeah, yeah, they'll they'll do. I mean, we're at three, right? We got volumes three of each one of those. There's not and, two. And Excalibur collected completely an epic collection. It's got like the last. Yeah. I mean, we have some gaps to fill, but that last one is solicited. It's gonna happen. We're finally gonna get the Excalibur one through four miniseries at, reprinted ever for the first time. Like I'm I'm beside myself. Ex totally beside myself about Excalibur. Um, and also New Mutants cool. is uh, next year will be totally complete. In, in, in epic love a complete epic line. line. Love yep. to see it. Well, that's right. There's no love going into the epics. That's why they can just crank them out. <laughs> <laughs> Post fall of X, all of the X-Men will be working at an Outback <laughs> restaurant. Wait, what? Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> the most shocking thing about Peter is how he doesn't like Arthur Adams. I almost pitched my cover for when people were talking about, can you get them to change the covers? I was like, I want that Arthur Adams poster that I had as a kid as the cover to the prelude to the massacre. I love that picture, which they kind of really control like, me. It's like, well, how could you not like Arthur Adams? That's so strange. How can you not like Greg Land? I, I I mean I respect him. I, okay, I like this. Uh, I like this sojourn. I like sojourn, and I like his. Uh, I was reading uh, some classic Birds of Prey. Nightwing, so Nightwing, I, and Birds of Prey. Like early the older stuff. Yeah. The new, you know, the new Greg Land. Look, I even met the man. I got this signed by Greg Land. Oh, I would love to get something signed by Greg Land. He could just find my body, and I could get a tattoo. <laughs> wow, I don't like him that much. Um, I have an uh, issue of Maxim magazine. <laughs> yeah, get him to find some of the source material. If that's what you really need to see. Have you gotten a word at the upcoming reprint of the world? Oh, this is another topic, honestly. This is a really good question because when people look at event omnis, and I'm and Curtis, this probably happens too in the epic line. It's like, what is the best reading order for these things? Like with World War Hulk, I think in be, like in between each issue. Issues of Hulk would have to go in between every WWH issue. And I think this is why we don't see the big events in the epic collections. Like, for instance, Infinity Gauntlet is not in the Silver Surfer epic collection that's called Infinity Gauntlet, even though 10 or 12, maybe I think 10 of those issues are Infinity Gauntlet related. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like you read one issue of the miniseries, then you have to read six tie-in issues various things and then get to issue number two some people just don't want to do that i don't know um yeah I, and honestly that is a really good topic like what are our favorite omnis event omnis that are mapped well because i mean i have some that i really enjoy the mapping and then what are some of our least favorites i really like that idea omar doesn't like frank quietly come on man okay first of all he grew on me Second of all, yes, I still think all his women look like ugly bald men with bad wigs on. That is true. <laughs> that is how I describe Frank Quietly's women. Uh, they shouldn't have reprinted World War Hulk. Those tie-ins are trash. Give us Hulk by Pack already. Well, Hulk by Pack is in that, right? But again, that's another event, Omni. One day we may get to that line when it's Incredible Hulk Omnibus Volume 20. Omar, I ordered the Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus. Thank you for the advance notice. Yes, that book is coming back to... That's restocked, and so was Immortal Hulk. But I think it's only the standard edition covers. Which, honestly, with Spider-Man 2099, that is the cover. 
I'm worried about the paper quality with that 1500 page prelude. I will say, what was a big book that I had? Uh, the mega printer did a really good job with a I can't remember. It was a book that was like 1400 something pages, or maybe it was 13 something. Uh, but they did a really good job with the binding and everything, and the paper uh, was thick, it was good. Can you just read Uncanny and be fine? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to read X Factor or Excalibur or Gen X or anything like that. But you'll want At least to. until 1991. <laughs> then there's the crossovers yeah. that stop. Yeah. Um, you you'll you'll dip your toes into them. All right. And then the big question from today was when are we gonna bring back my ex? We almost have the whole cast here. We just need Odfell. I could have invited Odfell to this. But not really map my ex. I like to map other books. That would be fun. Like, I, honestly, the mapping the Spider-Man book sounds like a lot of fun to me and a headache. But I kind of like those. And Peter, I know you're ready. I, although I also am often the impediment because it's so early in the morning for me and the, the allure of getting up at 4 a.m. during the time, the time of the year that we're further apart to map Spider-Man is perhaps not as strong as the allure <laughs> at getting up at 6 a.m. to talk about X-Men. So. <laughs> so wait, you rather map X-Men than Spider-Man? I'd rather map X-Men at 6 a.m. than map Spider-Man at 4 a.m. is what I'm Done. saying. <laughs> Done. We'll do that then. <laughs> uh, are we getting an Immortal Hulk reprint as well? Yeah, it, it's a restock. Not quite a reprint, but that is coming back. And I heard uh, Chip Sadarsky will be back on Howard the Duck if he goes enough issues for an Omni Collective. Will it be a number volume two? I hope so. I like that guy. Uh, Omar, you said all creator centric Omnis are going to have that numeric thing in the back, not just yes. Moving forward, uh, so hopefully Captain America by Mark Grunewald will have that number, the, the the epic thing, right? Like where they put the numbers on the back. This is part of the Mark Grunewald Captain America run. So these panel shows are so cool. Please do more. I love all the side conversations in the chat too. I do. I this this was this was a lot of fun. People asked me yesterday if I was scared, and I was like, no, because I'm pretty sure most people can keep it civil. Most. Then again, I don't know. Some of the things might have been censored out or filtered out by YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's just a one shot. That's what he's doing. Okay. Well, anyone who might know is here. Having just gotten them, what was the thought process in the two separate manifest <laughs> Stephanie's? Wait, wait, what is that? It? Was, that was in this very weird period where Marvel would sometimes just release some things directly to oh, oversized hardcover, especially if I it was thinking of the image title. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, and it's um, and so it was like the one of them was called Manifest Destiny, but it was actually the storyline from Uncanny X Men, and the other one was called Manifest Destiny, which was actually a mini series that ran alongside the storyline in X Men. And it's really hard when you're buying them online because unless you have the ISBN, it, it can be really unclear which one to get. But then, it, but then, what's really weird to me is that they didn't keep doing oversized hardcovers after that for Uncanny. Yeah. So it goes back to just trades. They weren't even doing first release hardcovers. <laughs> so that era is really ripe for getting Omnibus because the the shelf format of it is just a wreck if you had everything already. And there was, I mean, there was no logic. It was just X-Men books sometimes went to OHC. They did OHCs of tons of random miniseries though in that 20, 2008 to 2011 period. Heralds, I think, went right to OHC. Um, there's all sorts of like random mini series that you've probably never even heard of that there's over Spider Man covers was Spider Man Rain strategy at that time. Yeah. yeah, Bromar, <laughs> can you ask about Ultimate Spider Man Volume Two being gone? Gone. It is out of print. That is correct. Uh, I would love for them to expand on that Captain America Omni by way. Wait, but that one's not getting reprinted. It's Fantastic Four, so maybe one day. First official omnibus release was Fantastic Four Volume One in two thousand and five. That is correct. Unless uh, we're counting the Barnes and Noble. The Barnes and Noble Spider -Man. Spider -Man. wasn't that first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was in two thousand and four. That was like yeah. their tryout. If if Barnes if bookstores could carry a book like that, then maybe they should try it. Omar, in the January streams, you showed Ultimate Invasion Treasury Edition is coming in March, but in February stream, you showed is coming in a, a trade paper back in March. Did the trip? Both of them uh, for March? That's unusual. Uh, no, the gallery, you should come first. So then we'll get a trade. Now, before I go, I, I do want to thank my wonderful panel here. Uh, these guys were great, especially Curtis and uh, 
Riley, who came in at the last minute unexpected. That was that was a lot of fun. It made it a lot more fun. And it's always a pleasure to have Peter on. So where can people find you when you're not hanging out with me, gentlemen? Go round table. Go ahead, start it. Riley, Omnibus. Uh, yeah, uh, I am the Omnibus Collector on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitch, and Omni Collector on Twitter slash X. So you can find me there. Most of my content, especially on YouTube, is manga related. Uh, but I do cover comics and just whatever the hell I want to cover over on TikTok. There you go. And Curtis, where are you found? Uh you can find me all over. Just search for Epic Marvel Podcast. I have a YouTube channel, too. And the other day, I streamed a quick look inside the new Fantagraphics Atlas era Marvel collection, collecting mm -hmm. the old the, uh, Adventures into Terror, the Golden Age Marvel stuff. So, And thanks, James. He's always there. Got my back with links. Join my Epic Collection Facebook group. And last but certainly not least, Peter. Where can people find I you, buddy? I've been Crisis on the K on the internet uh, for over 25 years now. So if you're looking for Crisis with a K, I'm at crushingcrisis.com, where I have been blogging and mapping all of these Marvel Collected Editions since 2010. And uh, as always, this, this is just such a pleasure. I love Omar. I think he's one of the most positive forces in this community. And any chance that I get to come on and, and tease him and mock him and argue about Art <laughs> Adams with him becomes the immediate highlight of my day, week, month, and sometimes year. <laughs> And especially if I get to hang out with these two as well. So thank you so much, Omar, for inviting me to a special edition. I I, I couldn't imagine a, a better crew. Somebody asked about Omni Dog, and you have no idea how lost Jess is with all this. Like he has no idea what era we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe maybe from the perspective of somebody completely new to books, like what are you all talking about? What is this X Men nonsense? He'll buy it though if you tell him to. Oh yeah, you know he will. <laughs> then he'll be so confused and texting me. When do I crap? Omar, why do I need this? Yes, you need it. Yes, okay. you need it. And then he won't read it for like five years and then be like, what is this nonsense? Why did you make me buy this? Why why did I buy this? It's the same as this other book. Why did you make me buy this one? <laughs> um, but but that is it, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us in the chats and uh, recommending a lot of things. And I'll ask Peter if I could borrow those slides and post it and, of course, give him credit. Uh, thank you, everybody. Hit that like button on the way out. Check out CheapGraphicNovels.com. They have books up to 50% off, and they have a big DC Nick and Dent sale going on right now. So, yeah. Thank you all. I hope I don't have to make too many of these <laughs> anymore. Uh, but who knows, you know? Who knows? Um, I will be making a Let's Talk About All the Announcements videos once I make all the Omni announcements to catch everybody up. And I'd love to invite everybody that is on today more than welcome to and then look forward to curtis and i announcing the epic collections whenever i get that list and sh we'll share it and we'll start making the slideshow much like this one but that's it everyone have a wonderful day stay healthy and safe out there <laughs>